now is Alexander Hendry, um, and uh, he's joining us right now uh, with a little more on this Obamacare uh, situation from Americans for Tax Reform. Alexander, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing fine. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot of talk um, by the Trump administration incoming um, about a tax cut that they want to provide for the middle class. If they can eliminate Obamacare and replace it with something else, your argument is that is, in effect, going to be another middle-class tax cut. Mm -hmm. Right. So, for one, um, the Trump administration, incoming Trump administration, and also um, the House and Senate, both have said, all have said they want tax reform. They've also, uh, so which will mean um, lower rates, a more pro-growth system, um, a simpler system. Um, They've also said they want to repeal Obamacare starting next year immediately. Um, And that is also a giant tax cut. That's about a trillion dollars in tax cuts. um, And there's at least seven Obamacare taxes that hit the middle class. So this is a giant middle class tax. Yeah, run down a couple of those because Mm -hmm. those tax increases were phased in so slowly over a four or five year period that a lot of people may not realize the the enormity of what they did here. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, in fact, one of the taxes hasn't even gone into effect. It'll go into effect in 2020 if Jeez. the law is not repealed. Um, but the way they passed this was they manipulated the um, the, the uh, cost estimates of this bill because typically these estimates are produced over 10 years. So what they did was they had each of these taxes phase in over 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2016. And so... The bill actually, they the government said the bill costs a lot less than it actually does over ten years because these taxes didn't go into effect until into that ten year window. Um, for example, um, starting this year, as you mentioned in your article, um, that non compliance tax that they hit people with, almost seven hundred dollars for an individual. Or for a family of four, they would have a liability of two thousand eighty-five dollars if they didn't buy the insurance. Correct? Mm-hmm. Right, right. If they don't buy what the government has described as qualifying insurance, which is what Obamacare implemented. Not in, if they they can buy insurance that doesn't qualify, and they may still get hit by this tax. So that means close to the most recent numbers, say seven point five million people or seven point five million households paid this tax because insurance it was a bad product it was too expensive you know, whatever and, that is, and just to understand um what that does is adds two thousand eighty five dollars to your tax liability for the for any given year mm-hmm. that's correct so whereas you 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 may have satisfied your taxes before you could end up owing several thousand dollars at the end of the year mm-hmm. that's correct if you yeah. don't buy this product Wow, what are some of the other taxes that uh, that people have that have kind of slipped in there? Mm-hmm. So one of the big one that's coming into effect in 2020 is a tax on employer provided insurance that hits a certain uh, threshold of consumption, um, 40% excise tax um, on employer provided insurance. So people who have insurance from their jobs. Um, there's, there's several taxes on health savings accounts or um, flexible spending accounts. Um, so basically, the government making it more difficult for you to make choices over your own health care. Yeah. Um, there's also a income tax increase over the threshold that you can deduct um, health care costs from. So essentially, it's an income tax hike. Well, of course it is. Yeah, the Cadillac tax, people kind of forgotten about that. Um, but it, it was estimated by the Kaiser Family Foundation that it would hit 26% of employer provided plans mm-hmm. that that's huge and and because of the way it's adjust it's uh it adjusts it will just grow to um, encompass more and more of employer pr- plans over time so i hope people appreciate uh what they're going to be dodging when obamacare is finally replaced with whatever um, it is that replaces it. L- let me get back to, since we're talking. Uh, we're talking to Alexander Henry from Americans for Tax Reform. Trump has talked about tax reform. T- to me, the 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 only. I mean, you can pay that lip service all day long, but until you simplify the tax code to where you there are only let's say th- 
three different rates or a flat tax or what people may want to call a fair tax, I don't think you've accomplished anything. The only thing that accomplishes anything is reducing the size of the tax code. Right. Right. Well, I mean, I, I think both Trump and um, Congress are in the, kind of the same place. You know, as you they said, they, they do what you say. They reduce the um, they first they reduce taxes, but they also re- uh, com- compress the seven brackets into three, 33 percent, 25 and 12. So they really go into the direction. They don't go all the way, but they move the code dramatically into the direction of a flatter, uh, more consumption-based tax. Well, I, it's, I know we've we've talked about the the taxes people would, the tax break people would get if Obamacare goes away. What's your position, or what reporting have you done on what might replace it? Um, sure, you're gonna you're gonna save some money on these taxes. Are we going to see a an increase on the other side in premiums? When it's well, replaced, mm-hmm. well, what 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 you have to do, and you know, there, there's still people in uh, D.C. are still discussing what they what they want to see. Um, there'll be discussions, I assume, between Trump and Congress and other stakeholders. But you know, they have to do things like um, give more power back to the states. You know, Obamacare created this structure where the federal government decrees what states have to do. Um, they have to do things like give HSAs um, and one, expand access to HSAs um, so more people have choice over their health plans and have more choice over how they spend their dollars so right. they're not bound by this one-size-fits-all thing. And, and, and you'll see that, then, then premiums will go down. And and I've seen even um, some sort of a health care tax credit, possibly? Mm-hmm. Right. I, I think if you can ca- kind of equalize the way that health care is given to everyone so they have some kind of credit tied to an HSA where they have control over more control over what they what they purchase what they consume rather than the government telling you here's what you get you have to pay thousands in premiums that keep increasing otherwise we're going to hit you with a tax penalty right yeah so details on that still to come up uh, Alexander Henry listen I appreciate your time people Thanks can read people can read more on your article on uh, atr.org American Americans for tax reform is the website uh, fascinating conversation thank you thank you yep have a good day appreciate appreciate his time so th- you, you honestly uh, Liz we should post a link to this on the website um, this article which is on Americans for tax reform uh, go to 971 talk.com forward slash Cox and we'll put it up there on our blog. Just to just so you have background on this, when you go to work and you're having a conversation with somebody who's claiming, but but if you take if you take health care away from all these people, oh, that's not the issue. Look at just take a look in case you've forgotten. This will give you an opportunity to refresh the memory of these liberals on how much taxes had to go up to offset the cost of this program, and it's not even a single payer system. And it's still going bankrupt. If it wasn't for the money tree they have in Washington, where they just go out in their backyard and shake more tr- more money out of the tree, none of us have that. This system wouldn't have lasted this long. It, it's collapsing everywhere. And it's got to be changed. And I'm glad that they can um, get that done. Uh, Steve, thanks for calling in. What's your question? Hey, Mark. I wanted to ask uh, your guest. Maybe I can reach him online or whatever. But... Um, I wanted to see if you could actually use the law to skate their law that they passed here. Point point being, um, you know, Harry Reid made his big thing about Obamacare. It's the law of the land. That's great. The problem with that is our tax code is also the law of the land. So if you itemize, you can deduct a percentage of your health expenses from your taxes, correct? Uh, you, If it's over a certain percentage, yes, like 8%, right, right. 7 or 8%, something like that. Right. So if you get this fine, that fine then becomes a health care uh, expense by default. So at that point, could you deduct that fine from your taxes? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question for a CPA. I guess it would depend on how much you trust your CPA. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. Yeah, Steve? That's I want to see if I can ask that guy there, but I'll, maybe I'll try to look him up online. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think he's a CPA. 
I don't think he's a CPA, and I wouldn't trust his advice on that issue. I mean, he's a reporter reporting on that that story. So I'd, I'd still think a tax professional is probably the person you'd – because you'd, what you don't want is to attract the attention as a, the conservative you are with all your all your uh, yard signs. You don't want to attract the attention of the IRS. <laughs> well, I got one and worked it on for Christmas. I'm hoping to get it done, but – I'm sure my neighbors will really appreciate you, it. You take a picture of it and send us to it, and we'll post it on the blog. All right. Buddy. All right. Thanks, Steve. Bye. Yep, I appreciate it. You know Steve's house when you drive by. Trust me. I know right where it is. Uh, Got to get you a break. Uh, when we come back, I'll get to your phone calls. 314-969-9797. Interesting sound out today from the president. I'm going to play that for you when we come back, who is talking as he continues his victory tour, leaving office here.